In World War I, using chemical weapons was very normal and all of the countries did it. Each country was trying to create the most deadly chemical weapon it could use to defeat the enemy. One of the most famous types of chemical weapons is the mustard gas. This gas has nothing to do with mustard that you eat, but when it's released somewhere, it smells like garlic or onions. If you were in a battlefield and you smelt that, your life would not be the same. This gas was discovered by a British by the name of Frederick Guthrie in the year 1860. He didn't have a plan to use this gas in warfare. He was just a chemist that discovered a type of gas. But the people that used this in warfare were the Germans. In World War I, they got the formula for this deadly gas and they continuously used it throughout World War I. When a soldier smells this gas, first of all, his eyes starts to tear and it has a burning sensation and the pain in your eyes rises second by second and it gets so bad that you literally can't see anymore. After your eyes stop working, throughout your body on your skin, different types of scabs appear. This is the first issues that pop up when you sniff this gas. But this is nothing. Your lungs have suffered a lot. Cancer cells are starting to grow. In World War II, nurses would say the people that suffered chemical gases, their bodies were so messed up and cut up that the whole body needed to be bandaged up. Basically, there was not a single part of the body that didn't have a cut. After World War I, they didn't give up. They were looking for ways to make this deadly gas even deadlier. The biggest user of the mustard gas was Nazi Germany in World War II. They obviously used it in World War II, especially on the prisoners they had. The Germans had a set factory to put this gas in different types of shells so they could easily use it during war. The employees of this factory weren't safe from the gas either. A lot of the workers would suffer chemical damage. This gas was so scary that whoever was in the vicinity of the gas would suffer a painful death. First, it would kind of paralyze them, then slowly kill them. When they told the Germans to stop using this type of weapons on other people, they said, what's the point? We're gonna kill them either way. It could be by a bullet or this gas. The first time mustard gas was used, it was in 1917 by the Germans. But it wasn't only the Germans that were using at that time. It was every country dumping it on each other. But the Germans were a lot better at it and they had more advanced weapons compared to the other countries. But this gas was so bad that it would literally hurt the German soldiers themselves. The people that would launch these weapons, they would be suffering as well. And it's cool to know, the people that designed these chemical weapons, they wouldn't even come close to the battlefield, not even a hundred kilometers from it. But the soldiers were up front shooting all this. Just in World War II alone, 1.3 million soldiers got injured from this gas and died a painful death. And this is not counting the prisoners that died from this mustard gas. When the Germans notice that their soldiers are also suffering from this gas, they try to figure out a better way to use it. And that is why they started experimenting on the prisoners. Who were the prisoners? There were Jews, Russians, Gypsies, French, or any other type of prisoner you can think of. The people that were in these camps, they were treated like lab rats. It didn't even matter to the Nazis that these were humans as well. 
If you've seen our video about the Angel of Death, you'll know a lot more about this. Some people say that these stories are lies and they came up with it after World War II. But there are a lot of writings that shows this. Because the Germans were very organized and anything they did, they had records of it. They would write it down. There is a lot of filmings they did. And you also have to know this, that Nazis did not believe they were gonna lose ever. And that is why they kept records of everything they did. One of the most experiments the Nazis did on the prisoners, they would give them chemical gas and try experiments on them. So they could see if they can fix them or not. A lot of them would say that the prisoners would beg to let them die or please kill us. They would multiply the pain of these prisoners by 20 because they would try different type of chemicals on their cuts and bruises so they can see what it does. They would inject them with all types of materials. You could tell from the Nazi records that the people that were tested on, none of them gave a positive answer. And after that, they would die in painful ways like infections or literally from pain. From the prisoners that they were tested on, none of them came out alive. Except one, an anti-fascist German that was in prison because of political ideas. There were experiments ran on him like the other prisoners, but he stays alive and tells a story about it. And the reason he's alive is that they put a little bit of mustard gas on his arm and they didn't make him smell it or inject it. Hans Cargo says, they dabbed this a little bit on my arm and immediately around that area, cuts and bruises start to show and there was extreme pain on that area. But his eyes were still good and he didn't breathe it in so he could breathe fine. And that is why he stayed alive and after the war he was released. Maybe because he was a German, they let him go. Any experiment the Nazis were doing, they would first try it on a rat, then a prisoner. Then they would realize, like for example, vitamin A would fix the bruises of a mice, but the same vitamin makes the cuts on a human way worse. If we want to talk about all the experiments and painful things they did to these prisoners, we could be talking about this for hours. But we have to know this, that after World War I in the year 1925, most of the countries in the world signed that they'll never use chemical weapons in a war. But none of the countries actually listened to it. The Nazis used it in World War II. The Japanese also. If you've seen the video Unit 731, you'll know about this as well. After this, the Americans used it in the Vietnam War and in the end, Saddam Hussein would use it on the Iranians and his own people. Not only did he use this gas on the Iranian soldiers in the war, but he also used it on civilians. On Sardasht, West Azerbaijan, they used chemical weapons in the city. The civilians would say that it smells like grass and we didn't hate the smell. This is just one story. In the city of Halabche in Iraq, he completely wiped it out with chemical weapons in a way that 5,000 civilians died in one minute and more than 10,000 people were hit with the chemical gas and died a slow painful death. There's a lot of pictures of Halabche and Sardasht and it's extremely sad and disturbing to look at and we can't show it. Saddam Hussein would get these chemical weapons from the Germans and the Germans would later tell the Iranians to send the chemical warfare patients so we can work on them. Kind of like what the Nazis were doing. <laughs>